so heart failure preserved ejection fraction is one of the more interesting and exciting areas within heart failure right now. I think in chasing uh, systolic heart failure, reduced ejection fraction, and making big strides in that arena, we didn't necessarily focus on heart failure preserved ejection fraction. But now we see when we look at hospital data, readmissions data, heart failure with preserved ejection fraction really does represent almost half of the patients coming in with heart failure. So it's become imperative that we think about how to manage this patient pool better. But all our current drug therapies really target systolic heart failure and where we've seen mortality benefits, hospitalization benefits, they haven't really extended the same way to heart failure preserved ejection fraction. Though I think in the coming five years we're likely to see much more targeted efforts in that space. Um, again, we spoke a bit about minimally invasive approaches. Some of those things are uh, still able to be added on to heart failure preserved ejection fraction. For example, a cardiomems monitor I mentioned earlier, that can be used to track volume in any form of heart failure and that can be a nice self-aid for patients to utilize the support of the team, nurses, nurse practitioners, to get advice on their heart failure care and more proactively stay out of the hospital and live well with better functional abilities. Um, you may have heard of late uh, that transthyretin amyloid has really come to light uh, thanks to the development of uh, a new drug, Tefamidus or Vindaquel, Vindamax, treating this uh, misfolded protein uh, in albumin and prealbumin in our, our bloodstream, which can be both a genetic mutant or a wild type, uh, just a process of aging. It causes a form of heart failure preserved ejection fraction. So as we see our, our population aging and living with some chronic diseases like diabetes, hypertension, we're seeing a lot of ventricular stiffening. Some of these people are just the end stages of lifelong chronic disease and aging processes. Others may have what is transthyretin amyloid. So now that we have a drug therapy that more effectively binds that abnormally folded protein and provides a mortality benefit, um, there's a lot of impetus to look for it. So I think we're gonna see a lot of attention to heart failure preserved ejection fraction because we are seeing this community of patients with transthyretin amyloid come to light with a drug therapy that is gonna actually draw attention to all the heart failure preserved ejection fraction patients. They're gonna get screened more effectively. We're gonna be thinking about them at an imaging level, quality life, medical management. I think as we learn more about what makes the ventricle stiff and why people with preserved ejection fraction struggle, we're gonna be able to target our pharmacologic and device therapies uh, to that population. But right now, the mainstays of therapy really are watching fluid and diet, diuretics, managing risk factors, managing rhythm, screening for transthyretin amyloid, uh, allowing people the assist programs that they need to do that monitoring at home. A bit more in that telehealth space, remote monitoring, virtual healthcare space. Often these are patients who are a bit uh, more frail or often elderly, uh, coming in and out of the doctor's office isn't easy for them. So where we're gonna see innovation is not only in drug therapy, but also in sort of the modality of how we deliver care to this community. Because it is one where when you have more limited treatment options, more high touch inputs to their day-to-day -day life may be able to accommodate for that um, where we are lacking in medical therapy. But I do think within the next five years, it's gonna be the focus of uh, many of the you know, pharma, you know, pharmaceutical industry uh, expertise. There's a drug coming out in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, Mavicamptin, which is looking at actually changing actin myosin binding to uh, relax the muscle. And I, I do wonder in some capacity if that will ultimately have some role in heart failure, preserved ejection fraction. It's hard to say right now but there's possibility that some of these drugs that are coming in the pipeline for other indications may ultimately reveal to have additional benefits. Um, and the SGLT2 inhibitors, you know, they're focusing their heart failure data now on reduced ejection fraction, but there's no reason why they can't expand that and likely they will in future studies to preserve ejection fraction as well. And the overlay with diabetes is quite high, so even now there's a window of opportunity to use SGLT2 inhibitors in that space. And that may be another place where we see improvement for our heart failure preserved ejection fraction patients. So I think it's an exciting time in heart failure. We've seen a lot of advances in drug therapy, really looking both at reduced function and preserved function. So I, I really think the next five years will be full of innovation.